Blood of War. Bloody Vores. It is a very... It is a unique series, a unique first episode, I have to be honest with you. At first, I didn't like it at all because the main character, Mulan? Mulu? Milui. He has a weird name. But my first impression of this character was like, oh, he's just an ordinary protagonist that could do anything. Like, literally, the first scene was him driving this nice fucking car getting away from the police easily and then we get you know a few seconds later we see him in a bank and he's able to unlock this code which should be impossible to unlock so already I was thinking this guy could do anything so what's the point of watching if I know he's gonna fucking solve everything you know he's a kiritu he's a um I forgot his name, but he's the main protagonist from Tales of Zestria. So I was already kind of bored of his character because I know he could do everything. But then his father gets introduced, who is a detective slash cop. And we get to see a new side of this character of Mulu. I cannot say his fucking name. I gotta write it down with him. We get to see him actually get affected a bit. You know, he shows a bit of an emotion. He shows a bit of repent against his father. So there's some backstory there which we did not get to see, but I am kind of interested to seeing why he is like that and why he hates his father so much. And his father, he's very cold, very emotionless. In the very end of this episode, we get to see that the police shoot him. They shoot all of his friends and him inside the car and then quickly that cliffhanger gets ruined because in the preview we see that they're all alive. So that was pretty, pretty wasted. But alas, I don't mind it, you know, it was kind of obvious they weren't going to die because they're the main characters, but still, the preview pretty much ruined everything. It ruined that scene at the end for that cliffhanger. But uh, overall, man, it was a very interesting first episode. Like I said, the first half was, for me, it was shit. I did not like it. Like I said, the character was able to do everything. There's that typical big opai girl who is usually useless. She wasn't really useful this episode. Then we get the other two characters, which barely get any screen time. The one that was the getaway driver, he didn't really do much. The other guy, he is the pretty much he's pretty much the plot device to get the group into a situation which they shouldn't even be in. You get me? Um, he's pretty much used to put the characters in a big conflict. So I did not really like that because if he was a normal, you know, if he acted normally, if he acted realistically, he, he would understand the situation he is in. So they wouldn't even be, you know, up for execution if he acted reasonably. But he didn't because he's used as a plot device for that reason. So I, did re I didn't really like that part. But the second half is what made me change my mind a little, all right? A little bit it made me interested in the main character a little bit it made me realize that the you know the the plot device character I don't know his name but you know who he is you know the guy that tried shooting the kid he started crying when he found out that he was gonna die so you know I feel bad for him I'm kind of interested in the dynamic between the four main characters I want to know how they came to be I want to know what this blood ivor is because we only got like maybe 30 seconds of an explanation of what a bloodivore is just by the name you know carnivore bloodivore it's pretty much people that need blood to survive they they eat it they drink it they're like ghouls pretty much but the only difference is that these bloodivores which they did not go in depth with which i hope they do if they don't it's a big fault for the series why are these bloodivores, even though they're dangerous, even though they pretty much kill people, why are they allowed to live in society so casually? Because in the very beginning, we get to see one of these bloodivores attack a random girl, and he was just walking around, minding his own business. Shouldn't these bloodivores be, you know, isolated? Shouldn't they be exiled? Shouldn't they be, you know, watched? Shouldn't they be locked up somewhere? Shouldn't they be looking for them? But no, they just live among these people and just casually walk around. Maybe one of the reasons why they're allowed is because 
we get introduced to this medicine, this pill that's supposed to suppress the urge for blood. But even that, man, they shouldn't be just walking around casually without, you know, any enforcement. They did get caught. They are in jail now. It looks like they're going to pu be put into this death survival game or something, kind of like Dead Man Wonderland. So again, like I said, I'm interested. The second half did interest me a little bit more. So I am looking forward to the second episode because there is hype. Uh, the animation was not good. It's very average. There's nothing unique about the animation. So there's that. There are a lot of still frames. So I don't know if the manga is relatively new. Maybe that's why it feels a little bit slow paced. Because there has been dozens of still frames in this episode. A lot. And the still frames range from 2 through 7 seconds of just nothing happening. So there's that. It was an average episode. I'm not going to say I am desperately looking forward to the next episode. But I am interested to see how they will escape this death game they're going to be put in. And hoping that they survive. Give me your thoughts on this episode of Blood of Wars, guys. Did you guys enjoy it? Do you guys want me to make more reviews on it? If so, comment down below. I'll see you on our next video, guys. Sayonara.